Hi, Clay. Thanks so much for joining us on the show today. It's so great to see you again. Thank you, Kat. It is pretty cool to be back in a photo booth supply co uh, Google Meet. So I'm, I'm excited <laughs> for that. It's been a while. Uh, so for everyone's knowledge, Clay actually does the SEO for Modern Photo Booth Company, also was part of the PBSEO team before and uh, also did you know some SEO work as well as many other hats that he wore in, in that uh, company. Uh, and I'm really happy that you agreed to come on the podcast uh, today because I feel like you have a you, you freely share knowledge, which is really great because a lot of SEO people don't. Um, but one of the main things that uh, intrigued me is that you are so anti-paid advertising, and you're very much pro SEO and the stuff that doesn't cost you money. So, uh, can you elaborate a little bit more for all of our listeners and viewers as to you know your thoughts on paid advertising? Yeah, there's definitely a lot to unpack in terms of paid advertising, but. One of the things that I look at is the amount of people even stepping away from Facebook advertising right now. I, you know, if you're following along with the, um, you know, stopping profit for hate campaign, there are companies who are saying, "Hey, we're pausing our advertising on Facebook for however long to to avoid it." And that's all. It's all paid advertising, and it's all with the best people, the best in the world. A lot of the reason that companies are stepping away there is not just for that campaign. It's because those ads aren't converting the same way that they used to right now. And people are becoming more and more immune to seeing something pop up in their Facebook feed that they don't want to see. They're getting better at scrolling past it. And um, the ROI on Facebook ads had this really insane trajectory upwards. And it peaked and it was wonderful in 2015 and 2016. And 2017, 2018, it starts to fall off. And we started to see, especially in the marketing world, this just sea change of <laughs> an ad that you used to run would make you thousands of dollars. And now the ads that you run are not converting the same way. You will still find excellent niches and you'll still find ways to use it, but it's not, you know, it's not what it once was. And in particular, uh, you know, when you and I talk about paid advertising and why I'm not that big of a fan of it. The other thing that I definitely think about is um, everything that's <laughs> that's kind of involved right now with the coronavirus situation. You know, we made it, what, a minute before getting to the elephant in the room? <laughs> um, the, the benefit of paid advertising at its core is that you find somebody who's farther along in a buyer funnel. If somebody is searching photo booth rental, then clicking on the top result, the instant result that they see on something like Google, they're pretty far along. They're not doing that research. And so to be that top result is valuable when you might be able to book somebody in a wedding that's coming up in the next month or so. We know that's not happening right now. And we have seen that borne out amongst our client portfolio to where ads are being clicked on and <laughs> they see the you know the COVID banner, they click on that, and then they're done. And it's you know <laughs> a situation where previously they would have come through, they've clicked on it, and gone to a book now or a contact now and found out, hey, are you you know are you available for a wedding a, a month from now? The answer is no, right? <laughs> you know right now. And so that that space at the top of a of a results page where people are rapidly clicking and where they're looking for a quick answer isn't very valuable on a Google page right now. And so there's there's these two factors. I look at it like that's a lot of money to be putting in to the process um, when budgets are tight. So That's uh, definitely fair. <laughs> uh, and you touched on this a little bit in that statement, but what do you see? Because I know you look at, at a lot of photo booth owners' websites, since that's right. where you predominantly do a lot of your work. Um, but what do you see as the number one spot that photo booth owners are failing at in their website? Or is there one? Maybe there's five. <laughs> no, that's a, it's such a good question. Every single website that we look at, you, you right away can tell whether or not it was made following professional best practices. And so the first thing that I look at is whether uh, an individual owner has grabbed a WordPress template, slapped it on a, a quick site that they bought off GoDaddy and called it a day. <laughs> uh, 
uh, you know, maybe personalize it with a couple photos or, or something like that. And if you're in that position, go to your website right now and fix it. <laughs> like people know, and they're looking and comparing websites, right? The biggest piece of advice, you know, I, I thank you for mentioning that I like to share free information. I think the photo booth industry needs more good information. There's a lot of, you know, non-expert opinions out there. Like this worked for me and it's, you know, specific here or anything like that. Um, in the marketing work that I have done and then working with so many of the PBSEO clients in the past, I've seen more websites than most people. I can't say just about anybody, but like most people, um, people compare. And they shop and they don't just shop prices they shop everything that you do you know somebody is assessing your ability to make a template based on your ability to make a website is a very natural progression for a client to come in and say i want a very stylish template and to look at a non-stylish website and to bounce uh, which is the technical term not like bounce like i'm cool <laughs> any cool words <laughs> you know literally exit the page um mm. just because when you see a website that looks like it could be from 2012, you're expecting a photo booth from 2012 and design skills from 2012. And yeah, we got the end of the world from 2012, but we, you know, we don't want those things. We want contemporary looks and we want to make sure that even a website that might have been doing stuff that was, you know, compelling a couple of years ago is staying up to date and staying current. And so if there was a mistake that <laughs> that I see or, or one that kind of comes quickly to mind, it's not having a second higher level opinion. Um, and those don't have to be expensive, right? It's not like you've got to go out and pay thousands of dollars for a brand new website to be built. A lot of the time, it's just a factor of being on a superior platform. So being on uh, Divi, if you are using WordPress or using uh, Elementor, using a paid theme instead of a free theme on WordPress, those are big factors. Uh, you know, I, again, I, I love being on Squarespace. I think um, you know, at one point, PBSEO had a relationship with PageCloud, and and that was effective. You know, there's a lot of these spaces where it's just taking it <laughs> to that next level of professionalism and and work and really investing in it. You know, I I know that the website is not what it used to be. It's not the be all end all. There's your Instagram feed, there's your Facebook page, even your Google My Business listing. But at the end of the day, our clients have 90 plus percent of people coming through their websites. It's absolutely a factor and absolutely matters. You know, I can't, can't say 100% of people come through there. There are people who call from an Instagram feed or there are people who just see you in the search engine uh, results page and click on the phone number and, and call through from there. But they're contact forms, you know, <laughs> that the amount of people who say, oh, yeah, I'm getting a lot of leads from stuff that isn't my contact form is zero. Nobody ever comes to us with that problem. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is don't do the free website is number one. <laughs> Don't don't do a free website. Spend spend time on it. Treat it as if that's the only experience that somebody's going to have with your business. Treat it as if uh, it represents everything that you want to do. Um, make it the kind of website that alone could compete with the people that you think you're competing with in in a given market, right? And make it the kind of website that would line up well with the people that you're collaborating with in a given market, right? You don't want to be um, I know you with with Modern right now are doing this Ottawa pop-up initiative. Um, you don't want to be the one person on that initiative where if somebody clicks through on the websites and they're trying to book everything, doesn't look up to the standard of the other people that you're working with. You don't want to um, say, oh, I've got a beautiful Instagram. I've got 20,000 followers. And somebody clicks through and sees something that is not aligned with that because there's a friction there and friction in buying and in sales is the worst thing <laughs> you don't want you don't want to ever present places of friction for somebody to to be working through a sale so if i can ask you um 
for these people who maybe have this free website or maybe haven't invested that much time or don't even know where to start, because I mean, it, SEO is very overwhelming for the best of us, you know, let alone somebody who's coming in fresh, like you have so much on your plate and so much going on, like, but even as, you know, veteran photo boothers, we struggle with SEO and we struggle with doing things properly. But can you maybe give us like a couple of things that people can focus on right now that are maybe easy for them to do to help them rank a little bit higher? Yeah. And the first thing that I would do there is just address a very common misconception that we get. And one of the things that comes up in, you know, discovery calls that we might have with potential clients or that comes up um, whenever I'm talking with photo booth owners in general, SEO isn't magic. It's not something where there's this set of bizarre rules and they're all unique and you're supposed to, you know, highlight a bunch of text and turn it white and put it in the bottom of your page. Like that's, that's way out of date. <laughs> you know, that's, um, they changed that. And I, I'm not going to go into the jargon, but they changed it in 2008. There were updates and they began that process and have worked really hard on making it. So that isn't the case. The misconception is that Google's interests are different than the interests of people who are searching. They're identical. Google wants to serve the best page to somebody who types in a search for photo booth rental. Somebody who types in a search for photo booth rental wants to find the best page. Those interests are perfectly aligned. Every single thing that Google does is in service of that. And when you come to SEO with that lens, I think it feels a lot less scary. <laughs> it feels a lot less like you've got to learn the set of arcane rules. You've got to follow these standards, everything like that you do need to learn that set of arcane rules and you do need to follow those standards. Those are just best practices of web design. They're identical, right? Um, one of the things that Google looks for in terms of what a page is about is what the H1 or the, the header on the page is. If you, you know, if you step back and you think of it like, oh, I gotta figure out this rule, I gotta figure out how to you know, sneak that in or do something like that, then it becomes problematic. It becomes kind of tough and, and frustrating and hard to hard to work out. But if you come to it from the position of, well, I should have a very obvious header on my page because anyone who lands on that page wants to understand quickly what it's about. Then it feels very elegant. And the things that you do in service of that make a lot of sense. Um, when we talk about one of the big metrics is engagement. So um, let's say 100 people come to your website and all 100 of them have clicked away and left the site within 10 seconds of showing up and they didn't click on any other pages. You weren't a really good result for photo booth rental Ottawa. Now you and I have worked on this. You're a very good result for photo booth rental Ottawa, but um, you know, if that were the case and Google was comparing your website against another site where 100 people clicked and 50 of them stayed on and they clicked the second page or they spent more than a minute reading the content, looking at the images, engaging with, you know, sliders, if they make sense for you. Um, they don't always in the photo booth, you know, industry, but um, some people have calendars on pages where people can actually just check their, their date and see if it's available and fill out the form right there on the page. Again, that's not secret. That's not, you know, random. It's the same. It's the same between Google and a, a user. And they do this because Google just wants you to search with them. Um, if you, you know, are searching photo booth rental on Yelp, Google's not making any money. And if you're searching photo booth rental on the not, Google's not making any money. They make money from serving ads. To get those ads in front of people, they have to be your home base for search. And so they have to serve you the best results. And that's what they're always working towards. Um, you know, again, SEO is not secret in that way. And so that's the big piece that I look at uh, for helping people is make your website truly better, truly more engaging. Think of it like you send your photo booth rental website to someone and can they really find everything that they need to easily? Do they see right there on your homepage a clear explanation of what you do? They should. Do they see 
right there on your homepage, beautiful examples of the output photography of your booth, right? If you've got a photo booth supply code booth, some of the gorgeous photos from Legacy or the gorgeous photos from Queso or the you know, boomerangs that might have come out of Salsa, you know, you guys get that stuff for free. There's no reason to not have samples if you haven't taken your own and then to have your own photos, your own really awesome output on, on that page when it's there, it will help Google and it will help a real searcher. And those, those two things are, you know, close enough to being the same in 2020. Awesome. That's, I mean, those are easy things for people to do. Uh, and they should go do them right now because definitely I've seen some pretty interesting websites in my day too. Um, I guess I love, I love if, things uh, without, without interrupting you, just because I know mm -hmm. that, you know, we talked about that giving away free information uh, piece. In terms of, I'm gonna, you know, give myself like a minute to talk about a couple hard yeah. things. Click on your competitors' websites for the term that you want to rank for. Photo booth, you know, rental. And let's talk about a different place. Let's say we're out in uh, Portland, right? Portland's a beautiful city. It's you know, rainy, but beautiful. I'd love to live there someday. Um, you know, photo booth rental, Portland. See where you are, sure. See where everyone else is and click on one or two of those top results. Look at what they've done and be inspired by without ever copying, right? Because you, you know, that's beyond the pale, but be inspired by what they tell a user as soon as the page loads. Do they say, we're a photo booth rental company in Oregon, or do they say, you know, let's have fun? And the sites that are at the top say we're a photo booth rental company in Oregon because that's really important for somebody to know <laughs> when they've searched for photo booth rental Oregon. And the sites that are lower down might be really engaging. They might be really fun. But if they're not making a clear and obvious case for why they're the right result when you've clicked on something, they're not, they're not ranking as well. And that's borne out by people exiting the page. And it's borne out by Google lowering the rankings as a result. So you know, I didn't want anybody to, to sit here and not find like a, a harder technique if they feel like they're already in a good place with their website. You know, you can always get better, but that's that's one that, that people don't tend to do. They don't ever look at, uh, you know, a competitor and see how their page is, is structured and laid out. Yeah, I mean, you definitely should always know who your competition is or, you know, your community. <laughs> I know, I know. It's SEO is tough. SEO is zero sum. There's a first place and there's a second place and there's a third place. and you know, that goes against a lot of our philosophy and our ethos, you and I and Photo Supply Co. as business people, as humans, as, as anything like that. But they're numbered search results. There, there's only so much you can do. And if you do move into that first position over someone who's, um, you know, been there a while, but maybe, you know, shouldn't have been or maybe has just kind of lucked out into it, you you should be able to share and and give advice and help support them either with with white label gigs or with insight. You know, if somebody calls and asks you like, "Hey, you're ranking above me now. What's what's going on?" I, you know, I'm comfortable sharing that information, and I think that it's good because they were ranking above you for a while, and I would hope that they would have shared that information if you'd called and asked them. <laughs> I don't know how open some people are going to be to that, but uh, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, you have to kind of be the change, right? And just yeah. do what you wish other people would have done to help you. Um, what about, I've heard this term a lot in the groups and stuff, people talking about alternate tags and images that every time you upload a picture to your website, renaming that image to your search words. But I'm always scared that when I'm doing that, I'm going to be like, and I'm going to use the term keyword stuffing mm -hmm. my website too much. So is there, I know that there is a wrong and a right way to do it. And is it even important to do? Okay. This is one, a wonderful question. And two, it's an opportunity to, it's a wonderful opportunity to think about what an alt tag is. So uh, for the three plus percent of people who browse, engage with the web in um, a format that is not visually traditional, that's how they're experiencing your website. And um, that may mean a 
lack of visual acuity. It may mean something as direct as uh, what you know could be classical blindness. There are a huge number of reasons that someone might be receiving that alt tag instead of seeing your picture. <sighs> to that extent, you, you want to serve them the best website. And it goes back to that same thing. Um, Google wants to be responsible and accountable to the whole internet community. And that can be, you know, again, non-traditional viewing experiences. It can be non-traditional listening experiences, whatever it is. They want to be accountable there and they want to be accessible. So if you think of building your website that way, not of keyword stuffing, but if you think of designing a website that someone who can't see it can see, just like, and I don't mean to get you know too deep into the video game things, um, Last of Us Part Two just came out. One of the biggest games on PlayStation 4 is actually the first major, really, you know, $100 million game that you can complete entirely without being able to see. And really? Yeah, no, I, I think it's it's wonderful. They have a full accessibility mode. Um, Amazing. I didn't actually know that. And I've been playing it. Well, by playing it, I've been watching Darren play it. It's like a movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, you know, it's wonderful. And if you go in and you build your game that way, or if you go in and you build your website that way of what would happen if somebody couldn't see this image? What would I want to tell them about it? And what would I want to show was going on here, right? No, you don't want them to see photo booth rental, you know, Portland, photo booth rental, Portland, photo booth rental, Portland. Uh, the way that I would build something out like, like that out would be to look at what the output image is and describe it for someone who can't, uh, you know, can't at this time see it. Uh, and that might look like, um, you know, young couple in a photo booth in uh, Portland. And that's not keyword stuffing. It's doing, I think of it as a duty, or it's doing, you know, what is socially, ethically responsible of you and building that that website to be accessible for, for people who can't see it. Google's a robot, it doesn't have eyes, it engages with the web in the same way. And therefore, <laughs> you know, when it ranks pieces or when it looks at pieces like that, it sees them in the same way. And um, yeah, you you know you're not going to put photo booth rental Portland for every single one of those um, every single one of those pieces. But if you build your website that way, you're going to really find that one you're you're engaging better with the community, and two you you will see you know um, an SEO benefit from it from it as well. Uh, that's actually super enlightening. I did not know that. <laughs> I honestly thought it was just another area that you could put some information in. So I just learned something new too. And it's it's not like it isn't, right? It's not like you can't um, expand on an image, right? You may want to share what venue something was captured at. Again, we get into that place of like, this is good design. If someone's curious and they want to, let's say there, you know, there's no kind of visual um, guide rail there. They just want to see more information about that image. Well, that's good design to have it. It's good forward thinking to assume that if you've got a really compelling image with a wonderful, you know, traditional backdrop, so something where you've set up a booth at um, a local church or a local, um, uh, you know, any kind of venue that has something spectacular about the backdrop, as opposed to a backdrop that you brought to that venue, someone might mouse over that. Uh, and and want to see if there's any information there. And for there to be information there, you'd be surprised how many people are more likely to engage with your page. And all of a sudden, we get into the remainder of why that's so important for Google. That's good design. <laughs> you know, we want to provide more information. We want to be more insightful. We want to be more thorough in the work that we do to help people understand why they should book a, a photo booth with us. Got it. Is there anything else that you think? I guess people should focus on just in general, like, I mean, aside from, you know, straight up just SEOing their website to number one type of thing, but. Uh, you know, what websites are what are what we talk about. And I think that 
the nice thing about a website, the nice thing about um, owning your, your platform there is that you're not subject to the same kind of situations that you might see elsewhere. Uh, there are a lot of YouTube content creators who really struggled when YouTube changed their content monetization policy. There are a lot of people who left Twitter in droves when they started having an algorithm. It's like this, the idea of this is that it's recent. Like, why do I want to tweet from three days ago as the top thing that I see when I open the app? Um, you know, even if it is good, it's not, it's not why they came to that platform. There were a huge number of people up in arms about Instagram's algorithm change. And Instagram actually suffered so much, and this is very rare in technology, they walked back an improvement, right? Um, the algorithm was reduced to get some of those business posts and everything out of there. All of those crazy changes and everything don't happen on a website. They don't happen when you're in charge. You decide what happens. You decide how it looks. You decide, you know, you can't decide how many people see it in Google. And that is always a thing, but everything else is under your control. Um, you know, even Facebook profile pages don't look like what they, <laughs> what they used to. Um, that is something that, that I've always loved about web design is just that further sense of control. You know, if you, don't like your host, you can change it. If you don't like your platform, you can change it. You can do all these things that you you just can't do on social. You can't do whenever you're beholden to somebody else that you're giving um, your content to. And so you're always living on a razor's edge of something changes and it's kind of over. That is definitely great advice. I mean, social media is just a whole other ball game. Uh, in, it's overwhelming sometimes, but that is, yeah, a completely separate topic that I would love to dive into one day too. Um, I know a lot of people are going to be curious here about whether or not they can contact you and hire you maybe to do a review or anything like that. Uh, but just to unfortunately let anyone know that you are currently not taking any new clients, correct? Yeah, um, it happens from time to time. We want to make sure that we're serving uh, the existing clients that we have to the best of our abilities. But you know, I'm I'm in the PBSCO Facebook group. I think there's a ton of really incredible and um, that's cool. I definitely just got slightly scared by my door closing. I think there's a ton of wonderful and incredibly skilled people inside of the Photo Booth Supply Co community who are more than willing to you know help you review a website. Um, in preparing for this podcast, I was just reading the internet, which is you know, one of the best pieces of advice that I can give you is to get off of social media and read, uh, whether that's on a site like Medium, which I love. If you're not on Medium, it's a social media platform, but it's for words instead of just for pictures. And, um, you know, I, I don't want to be hypercritical of, of anything, but I, I love it because you can follow topics like entrepreneurship and you can follow topics and really dive a little bit deeper into marketing, into strategy, into um, anything that, that feels appealing to you there. And the piece that I saw that I was reading even a half hour before we, we started was about Steve Jobs. And the best advice that he said he ever gave to people was just to, to ask for when you needed help. Um, he called up one of the founders of Hewlett Packard and said, hey, can I have some spare parts? I'm building a computer. Right now, and this is of course in you know yeah. it's in the seventies, but that guy's phone wasn't wasn't ringing off the hook, and he loved the fact that this twelve year old kid called him on the phone and said, "I need you know I need stuff. I'm doing something awesome here." It's it's always within your power to to ask for help. You don't want to ask for freebies. You're not asking for somebody to you know give you their bookings, but asking someone to to give you some insight. If you come to that relationship with the idea that you've got a lot to share, if you come to that relationship with the idea that when they ask you for something, you're gonna answer their call, and it might be as simple as you become Facebook friends and you cook an awesome meal, and they're like, hey, let me let me have that recipe, right? There's, there's a kinship that we have in the industry, and maybe some of those introductions start with a website review maybe some of them start with hey i i saw your website how did you do it well, you know what what happened there um i know brandon is a big advocate for 
doing some of these reviews himself. Like it's really, <laughs> it's really special to have the CEO of a big company come through and look at your website and give, you know, his insight. And I know that he does those frequently within um, the photo boost micro group. Like advice from Brandon is, is also fantastic. It's, it's all, you know, it's all great. And so if I were to kind of give that suggestion, it would be ask for, for help and don't like, not to defend you here or anything. Don't just ask Kat. Kat is really smart, but you know, there are a lot of people who have similar experiences, maybe in your market, or there are people who have, um, you know, come to photo booths from a different world where maybe you're aligned there. And those are people to talk to and just build and expand those, those relationships. Those are the things that are going to keep you afloat as times continue to be a little, a little wonky, right? But we're going to come into <laughs> probably the busiest time in photo booth history in 2021, you know, get your booths now <laughs> for 2021, make sure that you're not um, having to reach out and ask somebody at that point for a booth when they're double booked too, right? Be the person who can respond to the favor, right? Let's, let's work that topic out a little bit. You ask someone to help you take a look at, at your website, go to them with your white labeling lead that came in from having a better website and from getting that, that booking and, you know, maybe be their answer when they need somebody to white label, um, help, help further that community. It starts with you and it starts um, today. I think, you know, there's no reason to not finish listening to this wonderful podcast and, you know, by virtue of Kat being on it, not of me, um, but finish listening to the podcast and go and do something to improve your business yourself. Uh, you know, however you uh, interact and engage with the, the community. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Clay, for taking the time to talk with us today.